What's going on YouTube? Gabriel Ryder here, PGA Tour Driven, the movement towards improvement. Now today's video, I want to share with you guys some of my experience in Q School. Now I have not played in Q School, but I've caddied at multiple different Q Schools in multiple different stages. And I want to share with you how we break down a golf course in a practice round. How can we get to know a course so when tournament round comes up, we're prepared. Now, playing a practice round is like getting to know a girl. You have to take your time. You have to learn the details. What's her favorite color? You gotta bring her flowers. You gotta go shopping at the mall with her, even though you know it's gonna be the most, most boringest thing ever. And if you try to do too much too early and be aggressive, you'll get slapped in the face. Okay, so let me share the format with you guys. There are two practice rounds and four tournament rounds. So the practice rounds are usually on Sunday, Monday, and the tournament rounds are on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So what you're going to want to do is for the first practice round is play in the afternoon. Now you can't tee off till noon or later anyways. That's just what they do. They've been doing that every year. So first, first practice round, tee off at noon. And the second practice round the next day, tee off early in the morning, 7, 7.38. That way you can see two different type of playing conditions. You can see how the course plays in the afternoon where it might be a little windier, a little warmer. And you can also play it in the morning where it might be colder, there might be some dew, the ball might not be going as far. Try to play with some veterans, try to play with some good guys, maybe guys who've played that course before. You can see what they're hitting off tees, how they're positioning themselves. You're obviously gonna wanna pick up a yardage book, so let me show you what a yardage book looks like. Okay, so here's a look at the yardage book. It shows you kind of like an outline of the hole, um, the distance, and some mini trouble. So let's start from the green and work our way back. These little squares right here are five yard increments. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So the depth of the green is 37. These little lines indicate mounds or tiers. So there's a big mound right here where if let's say they put the pin front left and you hit your ball over here to the right, you'd have to put up and over this ridge and you wouldn't be able to hit it within 10, 15 feet, let's say. Uh, bunker, kind of a more mound again. If we work our way back, you're going to find that these numbers here in the parentheses or bracket is the sprinkler head. So 142 sprinkler head. And this bold number is the number to the front, which was 122 to the front of the green. We always get our numbers to the front. So this is the 125 marker, 107 front. Now this number right here means 277 yards from the T which would be to the 150 marker, 132 front. So this is just kind of a general outline. These are the main numbers we look at. Um, as you can see, it gives you a number to carry this tier. It's 13 yards to the top of this tier. These are uh, in crucial numbers that we're gonna need to try to position ourselves properly. Okay, so here we are in a par three tee box. Now, if you've ever been to a PGA tournament or a, a PGA Tour practice round, you'll see this, and they do this in Q schools, they'll put this black netting up on the par three tee boxes. Basically what they're trying to tell you is that don't hit here, we don't want all these divots so when tournament time comes around we have a fresh tee box to use. The funny thing is what they'll do is they'll put this black netting up trying to make you think you're going to hit there during the tournament and then they never put you there. So make sure on par 3 tee boxes you hit from multiple tee boxes in case they move them back or up, especially if there's an elevation change. Now here's a par three green. Now this lines indicate the slope again. And as you can see from this slope to the edge of the green is only about maybe 15, 17 feet. So even though we have a 177 to the middle, which is about right there, you know, if you hit it 15 feet or 10 feet left, it hits a slope, goes down and into the bunker. And you have to try to chip out, could come back down, you make bogey double. Or if you hit it right, you only hit 20 feet right, which is a good shot from 177. You have to chip it. If it goes too long, goes down into that bunker. You can make a big number. So we either opted to play short down here, where you got a lot more space, or long, and putt back to the hole. Okay. So sometimes going at the pin isn't the only option and isn't the best option. Okay. Here we are on the tee box. Now, once you get here, there's a couple things you want to do. We want to make sure that we're eliminating the trouble up in the fairway whether it's fairway bunkers, whether it's trees, whether the fairway gets narrower. So we want to give ourselves the most margin for error. So what you'll see a lot of guys doing is taking a couple of clubs to the tee box. They'll hit their driver, they'll hit the three wood, and kind of see where those distances put them 
whether it's being able to carry over a fairway bunker or laying up before one. So make sure when you get to the tee box, we want to pick out specific targets, specific lines, whether it's a chimney, a house, a tree branch. We want to make sure we have a good lines off the tee that's going to give us the most margin for error and that also correlates to the golf club as well. We want to make sure we're taking clubs off the tee that eliminates obstacles. Okay, so let me show you uh, in our yardage book what we did to take a couple clubs off the tee to try to help eliminate trouble. Okay, so here's a hole on the golf course we played Bear Creek in California. Uh, hole two, you can see there's a couple trees up here in the fairway, about 300 out. So if you carry a drive, let's say you carry 260, 265, it rolls out to 290, 295, is that you can't carry over these trees now. Even if you're about left center or right center of fairway, this tree's really more over here you can't carry over and you're just blocking yourself to the green. So as you can see, what we would do is we would elect, instead of being down here, where if we hit a good drive, but it's just a little left or a little right, we can't hit over these trees, we elected to hit three wood off and be back from the 150 to 175. So if we pull it left or push it right, we can still hit over these, green, over these trees into the greens. So make sure you're not hitting it too far, even though you want the distance that you get up here, now you're blocked out and it's easier for you to make a bogey. Okay, so here's another hole. As you can see, there's four fairway bunkers. Now, if you're long enough, you can just carry it over all of them. But for most people, they have to lay up in between. Now, I saw a lot of guys hit drivers right where those 270 ranges and hit into these front two bunkers and make bogeys and doubles. So what we did is we hit three wood that could carry this bunker. And this is just a big slope right here in between these two bunkers that went straight left to right. So carry this bunker and would kick left to right and we took out these two because we couldn't get there. So we could carry this one, took out this one, took out this one and this one. And in case he had a bad shot, he could technically hit into that one. But we give us ourselves off the tee the largest room for error and he still didn't have that far of a shot in.